Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Rule Wave 3 with me, Alpha Pi Omega and the Kaiser Marine. So it is 1924 and we have yet again survived the entire year at peace. However, the situation in the world is uh, getting worse and worse by every month we pass. Currently, the highest tensions are between the United States and the Japan. They are at 10, so pretty much just one step away. Actually, to be precise, two steps away from war. Actually, like three. And we have relations of nine, meaning open animosity uh, with Russia. And we are on a way to actually try to push ourselves in a war against Russia. Russia, which is going to be fun. I'm really hoping that that would happen, but we'll see. There's also very high tensions between Spain and Russia and between Austria-Hungary and Italy and Spain and Austria-Hungary. So quite a lot of potential conflicts on the board right now. There's also minor tensions between United States and Russia and between Japan and uh, us, but you know, that is what it is. Is. Now, for me, the learnings from this uh, table is f as follows. We want to increase escalations with Russia so that a war breaks out. And we want to get into a potential alliance with United States or Spain. Uh, Spain, because they are already um, at a very close point to war with Russia, so there is a high chance that they would join us, and United States because we just have such good relations. And you know, we have even better relations with Spain, so let's hope that would work. In case we join United States somehow, uh, we will probably get dragged into war with Japan, which is something that is a little bit complicated for us, because we would need to send our fleet far, far away and basically protect our colonies. But at that point, I would probably leave it to United States to fight them off, because they have... Um, you know, twice their navy size, so they sh they're very close, so uh, the conflict would mostly be between them. But for us, we would like to fight Russia because it would mean that we can gain the Baltic states or Finland, and that is a very good price because it's in the area where we are actually located. Now, when it comes to the tonnage comparison uh, between the nations, we've actually had, after a number of years, our first decrease. Even if it's a small, just 2,500 tons overall. Uh, but a number of navies um, retired a number of their ships. Um, biggest retirement happened uh, on the side of Austria-Hungary. They lost 21,100 tons. Italy lost 20,200 tons. And Japan lost 18. 1,900 tons. There has also been a couple of navies that added quite a lot of extra tonnage. Uh, France added 19,600, United States added 21,000, Russia added 12,600, Great Britain actually retired 10,100 tons, and Spain added 4,100. So, you know, about half and half. Half of the navies uh, retired some ships, half of the navies added some tonnage. So um, pretty, pretty nice. And what I kind of like as well is that the order of the sizes hasn't changed at all. I think this might be the first year overall when this has happened. I don't remember if we ever had something like this. So United States, number one, we are right behind them, Great Britain behind us. Then there's a huge gap of 120,000 tons, 110,000 tons. Uh, France, then Russia, Italy, then Austria-Hungary at 250,000 tons, Japan 234,000 tons. So USA actually have more than double their tonnage. And Spain has 155,000 tons being the smallest one. But still, you know, being much bigger than it was years ago, where at some point I think they dropped to something like 70,000, which is crazy. Yeah, we can see it here. Oh wow, they actually dropped to like 40,000 looking at the graph. Incredible. Well, either way, um, when it comes to the relative comparison uh, of the tonnage, we actually jumped up to 16.18%, but the biggest one is United States with 17.01%. I mean, eventually we'll have to fight the United States, but for now, our um, there's pretty much no... No reason for us to fight each other because we have no clash of interest anywhere, which is why we've had pretty good relations with them most of the times. I mean, we were at war with them once, weren't we? But there was really no... Yep, they joined the war on the side of Italy when we were fighting them. But there was really no major conflict that I think we had them chase one of our cruisers or something. So it was pretty cool. 
economy and budget. Uh, so we've had a small increase in budget. I actually thought that we gained way more, but we gained only about one and a half percent increase, which is kind of weird. I really thought we gained more, but obviously not. We're at 279,830. So the good news is that there's an increase. Uh, the bad news is that, you know, it's so small. Uh, we have increased our expenses quite significantly, 203.2% from something like 89% last, uh, last year. Uh, but we have also managed to increase the liquid reserve to 18,430 rice mark. So to 6.6%. That's why I didn't change the stability rating at all. Um, other than that, not much to say. We had a little bit of an increase in ship cost, a little bit of increase in submarines, aircraft. Construction went up significantly by 56%, but that's the exact difference between last year and this one where we are now paying way more for the construction as we are gearing up for a potential conflict with Russia. So, um, as you can see, the budget keeps climbing up, but we really need... I mean, the escalations are there. We are at a really dangerous situation right now, where a war could break out at any moment. But since the very last war, every time we gained something, it was either the Reichstag or the Kaiser himself who came and just slashed our budget. So... You know, it's kind of funny, and it's funny especially because Great Britain and uh, I think Russia as well have way smaller economies, but they're actually having more money for the Navy, so, you know, it's kind of interesting to see that. Anyway, research. Uh, another year that felt kind of, you know, average or below average, we gained just a couple of levels in various areas. We gained uh, quality minus one 19-inch guns. We gained one level in naval aviation, white in an air, one in explosive shells and fleet tactics, one in white forces and torpedoes, one in torpedo technology, and one in submarines. And we gained one level in armor and one level in subdivisions. But the armor one was actually interesting. It gave us 2% instead of 1. And the submarines gave us, again, 5% increase in, rel in reliability, which is pretty good. So, fleet overview. Well, there's a lot of things that I want to actually mention today when it comes to the fleet overview. Uh, you guys know that we are building a new battlecruiser, and we finally got around to it. It's the new Brunhild uh, class, which is an upgraded Valkyrie class. And we are now building our first two seaplane carriers. So, that's actually an interesting... Um, thing I wonder uh, what they're going to be like, how it's going to work, and how they're going to perform uh, during the potential conflicts. And we're actually building two more submarines. We finished uh, all of the destroyers that we wanted, so we now have 58, but I think we're going to build another batch of them. So that's something to keep in mind. And we actually want to build that new light cruiser we designed at the uh, end of the last episode. I didn't save it, because uh, we could have a much better uh, design if we gain a couple of levels to the point where we can build it. But I completely uh, agree with what I said at the end of the last episode. Akira is going to replace most of our white cruisers at this point. We have uh, 16 of them, and I want to build... 10 extra instead of the 5 we're going to retire. So we're going to improve the amount of light cruisers that we have. So uh, when we look at the Navy, uh, I just wanted to specify what we're going to do. Uh, you can see here that we are rebuilding another battlecruiser, Berlin, to uh, the 1923 class. And I had a couple of other comments about the rebuilding of the battleships. Again, I understand why you think this might be wasteful and why you think uh, it would be better to maybe build more of them. But remember that building more of them means we will pay for the maintenance, we will build for, we will pay for, you know, the construction and it's going to be much longer, much more expensive to build that. Uh, but by upgrading the current battlecruisers, we ensure that they are top-notch. I mean, we have 28 knots battlecruisers so with quality one guns now. Uh, they have anti-air suit and everything. So while it may seem a little bit wasteful, if we upgrade them with what we're doing here and finish it, we can then uh, design a completely new class and these ones will serve us into 1930s, no problem. I would bet on that. So again, I understand why some of you would be against it and you would rather build new ones, but I prefer to make the ones that we have and refit them. Again, I can only 
you know, refer you to the real world where this is happening all the time, where you upgrade the current Navy to keep up with the standards. Because having a lot of aging and obsolete ships and building new ones just means that a lot of our ships will be very poorly performing in combat. For example, these ships have no anti-air capacity when they are not upgraded. We discovered that in the recent years, and with the improvement on air of aircraft, in a potential battle with Russia in the Baltic, which is where we would fight them, they have a lot of airfields there. So what would stop their aircraft to basically rain hell on our air, on our battle cruisers, and they would be just sitting duck because they have no anti-air capacity. So by upgrading them, we ensure that they can, you know, fight them off even in such a situation. So again, you know, it's the cost might seem steep, but it's still like one third, maybe one fourth of a new ship. So yeah, I, I still say it's gonna be better and. You know, it's taking, I'm doing such a major refit so close uh, to the time of construction because of the quality one guns and because of the oil. And so if we change uh, the guns, we might as well change the engines as well because it barely means more time, you know. So let's do a major refit and then be done with it uh, rather than doing it halfway or not at all. Again, I know this is about uh, your own uh, perception of things, but this is how I like to do it. So here we have the Valkyrie class and uh, we have the Brunhild, which is going to be built in October 1925, so next year. Uh, what I actually wanted to mention is, thank you guys for the comments for, about the naming. Uh, I corrected the name for the Brunhild and I corrected the name for the Würzburg uh, Seapoint Tender, so I appreciate it. I'm not a native speaker when it comes to German. I know I, I, I know a little bit of German. I learned it for quite some time, but you know things like these are easy to miss, especially if it's words I do not know. So appreciate it. And uh, you know some of you were like, cut, cut me some side. No, don't. Tell me I will correct it because you are right and I'm making a fool of myself. So thank you for that. Anyway, Brunhild is going to be the third and the, uh, flagship of the secondary fleet. It is upgraded. It has anti-air suit, uh, better equipment, uh, better uh, armor. So it's going to be just great. But it fits with the other two uh, ships we have of the class. So, uh, you know, they'll be working together. And we still want to build a fourth one, but I'm not sure when we're going to get to it because the Aquila project is going to take precedence because um, we really need to deal with that. The Canics are almost done. And once uh, Frederick is going to be done, uh, we are going to start working on the Aquilas because I'm not going to wait for the Brunhild. Uh, Königs von Bayern, again, our heavy cruisers. Once we finish the Aquas, by the way, we're going to look at the heavy cruisers because those are aging like milk, it feels. But still, they're pretty good, you know. And considering we have battle cruisers, I'm not really that, um, that concerned with heavy cruisers themselves. So, light cruisers, we still have the Gazelles. Lübecks are the candidates to be retired. So are Hansas. So we have three here and two here. And I want to replace them with five, uh, uh, with ten Aquilas. So we'll double the amount of light cruisers. Now, the last part of this is the Karosuwa. Those I will still consider rebuilding, but we're gonna see once the Aquila project is um, going if we want to retire them and build additional uh, ones, or maybe we will switch these out for heavy cruisers. I'm not sure. Uh, but considering their speed and their guns and everything, I think a minor upgrade to just give them better anti-air capacities, probably maybe better torpedoes. It might be a possibility. We'll see. We'll see what we can do with the Karlsruhe. But Hansas and the Becks are going to be retired. That is decided by now. The Gazelles actually... Uh, there was a really nice comment uh, which suggested that uh, the Raider light cruisers should probably have an aircraft. So I might consider this down the line. They still use the coal uh, engines. Uh, so if we do a rebuild for them, it's, we're not going to do it anytime soon. But if we do that, uh, they will definitely get uh, a seaplane because it is a definitely good idea to have that done. I, I really like that idea. And when it comes to destroyers, there's not much to say. We finished the uh, K1 and K24s. We might build a little bit more of them down the line, but right now I'm very happy. I'd be more focused on the ones that we have, like the V1, maybe uh, getting rid of them and creating a new 2,000 uh, ton uh, destroyer, which would replace them. It's you know a possibility, but again, these are not like bad. You know, they're just 
inefficient. So rebuilding them in a way where they could help, for example, with the uh, submarine warfare or mines might be a better choice and just have them completely detached and have them like, or maybe like a raider kind of ship. I'm not sure. We'll have to decide. It's, it's kind of hard to retire them because for what they weigh and, you know, th their speed is still good. You know, they still can serve. It just feels like you know, such a waste to retire them. And here we have the Magdeburg, the Magdeburg Seapoint Carrier, which is our newest type of ship. Uh, we're building two of them, Magdeburg and Würzburg. Uh, they're going to be, one is going to be, one of them is going to be finished later this year in September and one in uh, July next year. I'm not sure if we're going to build more, but the two that we have here, I think are kind of good. One should be stationed in the Skander fleet uh, area, so in Indian Ocean, and one should be stationed in the Baltic. So we'll see, they, they might, uh, you know, be used in the war against uh, Russia. So we'll see how they perform. They have eight sea points, which is, you know, nothing to scoff at considering their size. They have very lacking ships, but uh, very lacking firepower, but for their size, you know, 4,700 tons, what do we expect? And it's dual purpose, so it's mostly, uh, I, I think it's dual purpose, I'm not sure when I said that, but they have a decent anti-aircraft suit as well, so they should be able to fend off any aircraft. Basis on land fortification, there is really nothing that we can say here regarding this. Nothing has changed. Coastal fortification, nothing changed as well. And here we have officers. So we have had a little bit of a decrease in the recent years. Uh, we fired one, well, fired. We assigned him to Peru, one of the incompetent officers. So that is a, something good. And we have a little bit more above average, but also below average officers. The amount of average uh, shrank a little bit and we still have 50 unknowns. So yeah, that's all for now and I'll see you in the game. Welcome to the game. It is January 1924 and as you can see we are continuously escalating with Russia as we did before. Now, as I mentioned, I have renamed some of the ships that we have under construction, the Brunhild. Uh, this was the original name. I actually took it from somewhere online, so that was probably some kind of, you know, Frankenstein English German <laughs> translation. But when I look at Wikipedia, it confirmed that this is one of the, um, you know, translations that's used in modern um, modern uh, German and same with Würzburg. I don't know why I tend to put T's there. You know, I, I know that I put Würzburg, but well, it is what it is. And hello again, you keep changing this. So König von Preussen, uh, Friedrich Wilhelm II is going to be rebuilt in eight months and uh, Berlin is going to be rebuilt in nine months, which is the point at which we can start truly working on the Aquila class. Until then, we'll have to keep a little bit of a low profile. Uh, we're still building the new submarines, aren't we? Yeah, we're building two new... Wow, we're going to take 15 turns, really? Man, well, but, you know, it's going to be the two oldest submarines decommissioned. So if we could throw in one more and just keep expanding our submarine fleet, it would be pretty cool. Now, I'm not going to activate all of our ships uh, to send them into the Baltic, but we'll see how the relations with Russia are going to, uh, you know, escalate. If they do, then we we'll, might have to do that. Anyway, end the turn. See what's going to happen. Apparently, Captain Surze Munich unassigned happened to bump into the Kaiser at a recent opera performance. It seems they hit it off real well, and now the Kaiser wants Kapitän in Munich to command our newest ship battlecruiser Brunhild, currently under construction. Of course, this petty intrigue is worthy of an opera in itself. I will not have appointments interfered with. I have a better idea. Let's assign him as the naval aide to the Kaiser. Sure, you know what? Let's let's do what Kaiser wants. I don't mind that. We don't know much about the guy anyway, so it's not an issue. Hydrodynamic hull form reduces engine uh, hull points requirements. Okay. And shipboard aircraft operations, large aircraft carrier. Okay, so we can now build fully purpose carriers. Awesome. So, uh, you will notice that there is a couple of um, P 
people added to command some of our new divisions. I'm gonna show you that right now. I didn't want to do it before and they were assigned. Uh, anything else which is important here? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. So what I did with the divisions uh, is actually I created uh, six new divisions. We have uh, six independent destroyer divisions which will serve uh, together. There are some uh, intriguing things about it. Uh, most notably, I have assigned one K-24 uh, destroyer as a flagship to each of these divisions. So they're going to be led by those. And the fifth and sixth division actual has more of them? No, the fifth doesn't. The sixth one does. Yeah, the sixth one is two of the K-24s, uh, and the rest is always K-1s and 124s. And here we have three K-1s and two K-24s. So that's how it is, and we can see that people have been assigned to command these. Okay, I did it as an independent story division because I want to assign them to various uh, places depending on our needs and the things that are gonna happen. And right now we are really not sure about that. So let's just keep chugging along. War has broken out between Japan and United States. Okay. One of our major arms manufacturers wants to enter a technology sharing agreement with a company in Spain. Is this advisable? Uh, never. I like Spain, but I don't want to have another technology week. We've seen that before, it's just not worth it. So, Russia is rebuilding some ships and they have increased their naval budget. Amazing. That is just amazing. So what is Russia like? We know that their naval budget is significantly higher than ours. Their dock size is also significantly higher than ours. Active mine warfare. Base resources. And their economy is so much smaller. They have such big naval budget compared to us. It just kind of sucks, you know. <laughs> Speaking of that, I think it might be worth our time to actually revisit the bases that we have in the Baltic and expand on them. So what do we have? We have... Uh, okay, let's expand this base in Pillow to 40 ships. And let's build... Let's build a, an airship base in Danzig. That way we're going to have more uh, uh, more aircraft in this area. Actually, we requested, yes, next turn we're going to get another proposal for aircraft. So, by the way, I love the fact that the game keeps upgrading your current designs. That's actually one of the coolest uh, features that I have seen in the game ever you know because it's it's so cool that you can see uh, them you know you comparing the new designs to the older designs uh, which are upgraded it's, it's so cool I, I like that it really feels like real world so what's on the turn our scientists report that they are working on the problem of increased muzzle velocity okay amphibious operation Daihatsu barges ah okay so this one is for Amphibious operations. Let me just pour some tea. I have a little bit of a cold. I hope it's not too noticeable in my voice. So the Hatsu barges and new naval patrol aircraft are ready. So we're using the Arado uh, 117B, which is a fairly old design. Its speed is still higher than all except you, which you have also a better cruise speed, but way worse range. You have no firepower, a little bit of maneuverability, and a higher touch. Yeah, it really just seems like this is a golden design for us. The only one that I would actually consider is Arado 161, which has a lower range significantly lower range and lower speed but has higher maneuverability but that's about it there really isn't anything else that would make me con even consider it hmm yeah so let's just let's just say no 
Our most modern naval patrol aircraft is more than three years old. Should we request a tender? <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. I, I'm not gonna say that we just did that, but... Uh, okay, let's go with range and toughness this time and see. So someone has retired, uh, Admiral Ravensburg, Commander of the Mediterranean. And we have more ships, blah blah blah. Okay, tensions with Japan has also increased. Uh, so, we have war between USA and Japan. So that's gonna be a massacre, but kind of interestingly, United States have interests in very... No, actually, they are meeting in this area. They have a position... Oh, Shanghai is part of the United States. Really? That's a concession. So this would lead me to believe that, the, you know, Japan is going to make their time with United States really nice. But, oh, but they also have something here. So these are the only two places where they meet. And while here... Japan is fully dominant here at sea. Wait, no. These are here, so they have just the Philippines here. Okay. So they don't know. Well, base capacity 100 is not bad. It's better than Borneo. <laughs> Interesting. We'll see what's going to happen. So far, not much seems to be the case. Okay, let me just. Are we upgrading? Yes, okay, so we're building coastal... No, we're, we're not. I thought we were building a coastal fortification in East Prussia, but we're not. Okay, never mind. Recent improvements in productivity has boosted our industrial production. Well, good. We got a little bit of a boost to the budget. Like 7,000. There has been an internal upheaval in Samoa. If we send expeditionary forces to restore order, there's a chance that we can take it over as colony. Nope, nope, nope. We're not interested in Samoa. A British order took it. Our scientists report that they are working on the problem of triple turrets on white cruisers. In the battle in Northeast Asia between the Japanese and United Navies, United Navy ship Spokane and destroyer Jouat has been sunk. Well, that was what I was talking about just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, so we... Wait, we do have Marshall Islands here? Uh, some, okay, so it might have been in our interest. I forgot about Marshall Island, but really, you know, not. And we do have this modern archipelago here as well. <sighs> I always forget how spread out we are. It's actually a little bit disconcerting. Uh, so we have you guys in Northeast Asia just keeping the peace. The rest is all in mothballs. Okay, private ship building expanded our dockyard by 1000 tons. We have finished construction of an airship base in East Prussia, and a spy from the United States has been discovered. What do we do? Give it maximum publicity and decry their policies. The Heinko company has developed an improved model of the fighter. Okay, I dig that. I dig that. So the F is faster, better cruise speed, better range, and better toughness. Really nice. Really nice. And no information about the war. But wow! Our yearly budget has just been bumped up significantly. Okay, so I say we do what I was talking about just a moment ago and build a 10 inch coastal battery. What about the 12? Wow! Okay, that's a huge difference. Yeah, let's go with a 10 inch, in 10 inch one and build it in East Prussia. And I would also like to build two more submarines. Because, believe it or not, we need to get more of them. Especially because we plan to retire too. So building two more is a good idea. And how are we doing on the classes? We have a coastal mine laying. 
Yeah, we have a lot of uh, various ones, so we can build regular ones. So medium range submarine, uh, new 226 and a U-227. Okay, so now we're bleeding money again. But it's fine, it's fine. Trust in the process. So let's end the turn. The Kaiser has made an ill-considered statement about Great Britain. What is your response? I'm gonna ask by a foreign journalist. Try to explain. You will not comment on policy issues. Oh my god, agree wholehearted with the Kaiser. Prestige budget. Hmm. Let's go with this one. We can burn a little bit of a prestige. So, naval aviation lighter than air, improved airship diesel engines. Okay. They're building motorboat squadron in Northern Europe. Oh, wow. That was actually a really nice bump. So, 600. Let's, uh, let's then go ahead and build another 10 inch coastal battery in. East Prussia, because that is going to be important for us for the upcoming conflict. But yeah, the budget has jumped up significantly. I really, really like it. So how are we doing? In two months, the rebuild is going to be done. Magdeburg is going to be rolled out, and then Berlin. Wow. Okay. So we're going to rebuild the last battle cruiser, and we're going to start working on the Aquila project. I was actually hoping that we would. Uh, get some significant upgrades to our technology before that, but doesn't seem like it. France has proposed a five-year security arrangement between our nations. What is your advice? Oh, uh, well... It's gonna hit our budget, and I was just saying how I enjoy that it is getting better. I wish I could enter a relation. Wait, I can do it here. So France seems to be pretty peaceful, so let's do it. Treaty. Oh, they broke down. Okay, never mind then. Hey, and yeah, weight saving and machinery. Good. And the Focke Wolf company has developed a float point scout as a private venture. Uh, max speed is higher, cruise speed range is similar. I, I mean, yeah, I don't really think, yeah, no. In a battle in Southeast Asia between Japanese and US navies, the Japanese ship Manchu has been sunk. USA lost Corvette Vigilance and Corvette Arch. Okay. And it hit... Oh. So not only have we lost the deal, the budget has been cut down either way. That, that sucks. I was not expecting that. Well, thank you, game. You really made me happy. God damn it. <laughs> I should have just gone with... Screw them. Uh, so, so because of that, we really don't have much to do now, do we? Yeah. Huh? Well, okay. We'll just take it. Magdeburg is commissioned into the Navy, and Friedrich Wilhelm II has finished reconstruction. The Austrian government is interested in buying rights to armor development. Sure. Austria can have it. And our scientists report that they are working on the problem of weight savings in turret fittings. Figuring concept of improved hydrophones, three and four inch twin dual purpose mountings, okay, and better aircraft handling practices. So we're thinking about a lot of stuff but doing nothing. Great. Great, great. So Berwin is gonna be done soon. So once Berwin is built, we are going to put the new 
uh, or the last battlecruiser into refit and we're gonna design a kill that's the plan so let's end the turn battlecruiser Berlin has finished reconstruction Captain is a faber average sportsman missed the last tactical exercise as he was late returning from a golf tournament which he won uh, this is the last time we'll have a combat training interrupted by useless pastimes. Get him out. Have him beached. Uh, let's go in the middle one. Research breakthrough, armor development, decapping belt. Oh, nice. Well, at least something has upgraded, and the new naval. Patrol aircraft prototypes. So, better speed, better cruise speed, significantly better range. You are our new aircraft, I can see it now. So, max speed is 94, so that's 5 more. Cruise speed is also 5 more. Range is increased by. 23 medium range by 17 and this one by 13 firepower is the same maneuverability is increased by four and toughness by two and you can get well i mean a little bit of less of a bomb load but i'll take it Heinko will be our new aircraft in an engagement in northeast asia between japanese and u.s navies japanese ship destroyer okikaza has been sunk usa lost the destroyer porter Okay, when two are fighting, the third one is laughing. USA halted construction of a battlecruiser due to financial difficulties. Interesting. I'm done re equipped. Uh, some movement of people. Okay, cool. So, as we previously advised, we are now going to go and rebuild our last battlecruiser, which is Frankfurt. That baby needs a new shoes. So again, when we upgrade the main guns, it will cost this much and already cost 12 months. So we can as well rebuild the engines because it just makes it slightly longer and slightly more expensive. But we, we get extra you know, wait to play with, and we can thus, uh, 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 we can't make a dual purpose, unfortunately, but we can, thank you again to whoever mentioned the topside load and capacity here, because that is amazing. We can actually make you much more capable. 15, yep. And we have the improved director, director increased elevation, and we still have 247 available. Uh, so what if we added a different mount? Well, we actually can put another mount behind, so that kind of sucks. No mines. Snap, you cannot be dual purpose either way. That is interesting, but I can actually make more of you. Can't I? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why can't you? Oh, because you're case mated. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure if I do this, it's not gonna work because, yeah, then you are no longer. Okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So wait, could I improve you guys when you're casemated? Uh, nope. Okay, I can't. So improving anything here doesn't seem to be a great idea. I could give you more ammo and a little bit more. A little bit more here, and a little bit more here, and a little bit more here. Okay, so you now have more, you have an anti-aircraft suit, you have more tertiary guns, you have more ammo, you have faster speed. It's pretty much all we wanted, right? 
I could have actually gave you a C point if I wanted to. I'm wondering if it would be worth our time because giving you just a little... Okay, it's me because I forgot what you were at the beginning. So let's do it again just so that we are sure. Replace machinery, 28, oil, upgrade guns. Uh, was it 20 and 20? No. 15 and 20. Yep. And if we gave you one C plane and added a catapult, midship. So that would work, wouldn't it? Oh, it wouldn't, because it actually, yeah, top side load is, so that means I have to lower this to something like this. Okay, you'll have less anti-aircraft guns, but you will have a sea point, which is going to be actually pretty good for us. And I could, no, I can't make that too. Oh, and that would actually even increase the top side load. That's interesting, I didn't realize that. Okay, then you have a uh, director and everything all okay. So I guess we can just keep this extra weight for us. You know, there's really no point in doing anything else with it. So let's save it and rebuild and be done with it. And on that note, we are going to design our new light cruiser called Aquila. So let's go ahead and select a light cruiser. Where are you? Right here. And the game suggests something for us. So this is a, a really cute small cruiser. I guess too small. Tetis. Huh. If triple... Can we have triple guns? No, we can't. So why the hell are you suggesting that? Uh, that's interesting. The game is suggesting stuff we can't have. Okay, this one is looking good. Uh, director for secondaries is not... Can we have seven inch guns? Nope. Okay, so it has to be six inch guns. Actually, five, that's 12,000 yards, 1.5. Okay, so quality minus one is still better than quality zero for the five inch ones. It's 32 knots, that's crazy, but it's amazing. Okay, unit machinery, we want that. Can actually make you 8,000 tons, so we have a little bit more area to play with. You have four 20 inch guns, that's amazing. You have a 2 inch belt, that's not amazing, but I don't think we can correct that even. You have eight secondaries. You have a lot of torpedoes. We have way more mines. I'm thinking we get rid of these. All of them. And give you one center line if it's possible. Could I give you four? Oh no, it, they can be... Okay. Dang it. Uh... Ah, okay, 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 we have to think about this. So I can put submerged. Hmm. I would really like the belt to be at least three inches. That is okay with you, but I can't make it bigger because yes, that's not a white cruiser anymore. Could 
put some second there. That still doesn't really cut it, does it? If we lower the speed to 30 knots, we can go crazy. Yes. Uh, deck, upper belt, belt extended, cloning tower turrets. And I would still have enough for the mounts. So let's go port and the starboard. Port and the starboard. But why do you have a problem suddenly with the topside load? I didn't do anything, did I? What changed? Hmm. It's kind of interesting. Range medium. I don't know what, what this is all about. Oh, wait, because we have... Okay, we have four... Jesus Christ, that's not even possible, is it? No? Wow, we can have four tubes? Jesus Christ, okay, so then you become super dangerous. And that is definitely worth it. So let's put you guys on a little bit of a queerer... Let's do it this way. And that seems like a perfect match. So we have an 8,000 ton light cruiser with a 4 inch belt. That's pretty good. 1 inch extended belt, deck, deck extended, conning tower, turrets, turret top, 30 knots speed, 8 light guns, 3 medium AA guns. And it has a insane amount of torpedoes. That actually is a little bit excessive, I think. But I'll take it. You know, we can. The torpedoes are becoming extremely dangerous. So I think, all things considered, this is a pretty good, good design. And it's gonna be very hard to avoid it. And I mean, it's a light cruiser, you know, 30 knots. Okay, so can you give me the Aquila? Is it here somewhere? I think it was. I just want to check if there was a different spelling, but I don't believe so. Nope. Okay, so then it is just Akuila, like this. Akuila class. They're gonna cost 1500 for 22 months. That's actually pretty cheap. If you want to put 10 of them, that is not bad at all. I'm just, one thing that's irking me is that we don't have any C point on them, but other than that, improved director, it's actually pretty good. The, the issue that we can't have 7 inch guns though is a little bit sucky, but we'll have to rearm them to quality zero soon anyway. Increased elevation. Oh, you don't have any torpedo defense. Oh, that sucks. So 29 knots. For torpedo defense, that's actually a pretty, pretty good trade-off. Could we... nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so 29 knots instead of 30. But you have torpedo defense, decent belt. Nice armor. So basically gonna be a battle cruise battleship killer with the torpedoes and the destroyer hunter. And the mines are also a really good touch. Okay, so let's design it. And we'll build these bad boys soon. So in turn, Frederick Wilhelm has finished her working up. A new British torpedo bomber called Vickers Typhoon is entering service. It has a better range than our torpedo bomber. The head of naval aviation wishes to bring your attention that we could now develop medium bombers. Yes, definitely. So... So for you it's gonna be toughness and bomb load. Because medium bombers could rain hell. So let's keep it. 
Okay, November. Well, we had a little bit of increase in monthly balance. Who do we have in active service? Just okay. You can go to reserve, and you guys can go to reserve. And Berwin is actually going to go to mothballs. So that makes it so that we actually have a positive monthly balance. Still no escalation with Russia. Rather surprising. The British government is offering to sell us the rights to 9-inch guns of quality 0 for 2,700. Our current 9-inch guns are of quality. Yes, definitely. We'll take it, because that is a huge upgrade and we can start using 9-inch guns. Cool. And that's that. The latest design is ready for construction. Not now, let me just see what we are working on right now. So Würzburg is still being built. Frankfurt is being rebuilt. Brunel is being built. Okay. So five months. Okay, you know what? We're gonna start with Aquila. The first one. We can afford it. And I want to see this bad boy in service as fast as possible. The 80 mines is amazing touch that's gonna help us significantly and it's december so no war for us this year either in an engagement in northeast asia between us and japanese navies the united states ships destroyer batsworth has been sunk japan lost hatsuyuki okay japanese submarine has been sunk by us forces and our diplomat reported that there are rumors in Russia about war with us? Well, they still haven't moved or done anything, so I still don't see it really happening, but the good part is that Japan and United States are actually fighting each other, and Japan has significantly increased the size of its navy. Holy hell. While United States are about at the same place where they were before. So, you know, that's fine. That's fine. We have advanced pretty much in all of our plans. We have Berlin uh, refitted. The last battle cruiser is being refitted. We're building Brunhild, which is going to be ready next uh, year, or actually this year, but in the next episode. Würzburg is going to be done soon. We're building Aquila. And once. Uh, Actually, once Würzburg is done, I'm going to put another of the Aquila class ships in production. And once Brunehild is done, I'm going to put a third one in. So we're going to be building three white cruisers. And once they come into service, we are going to retire the uh, Lübecks or Hansas. I think Lübeck is the older class, isn't it? Yes, 1899 and Hansas came... In 1909 so these are better and just as a good measure let me see what we can do with the Carlos Rue could we rebuild you in a sensible way you have 27 knots so if you replace machinery and give you oil how far could we get you to 30 yes we would actually get you to 30 you would be overweight so 28 seems decent, uh, 29 it could get, okay, improved director, wow that's actually lighter, wasn't expecting that, increased elevation to the guns, Quality, quality, can make you dual purpose. Which will... Jesus Christ, they're gonna be really good. So for 1,370, you're gonna be two knots faster, actually three, because you are already getting older. You're gonna get better director, you will have a very decent anti-air suit. We could put mines on you as well, which is really good. And for broadside, aft submerged. Well, we can keep these. I don't really mind that right there on it. You have torpedo defense, so you're also pretty much. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. 
I like that. Or we need a director for you too. But I can just swipe the lower the ammo here, Edward. Good. Oh, and that game Y. Okay, but like this. This would be a pretty good one. Not a cheap one, but the Karlsruhe would serve as a really good ship in the future. And how can you have seven inch guns? And be a light cruiser. Oh, okay, we can't have it. Okay, never mind then. Either way, it's still fine. This will be a really nice. So, Karosuas are gonna stay in service. We're gonna return the Hansa and Vibex and rebuild the Karosuas. And that means we'll have, what, 10 plus. How many of you we have? We have the Karosrue. And then two Aachens. They've been actually built in 1918, so they're really... Wow! So you are way better. You have the mines and everything. So it's basically just cars through where the Achens can stay as they are. Because I don't really think we can do much with them. Even if we replace the machinery... Yeah, that makes no sense, really. They could just get the... Uh, well, improved director, and it would be great if we could give them anti-air. So something like this. Yeah, and I could just do this one very cheaply, very quickly. So something like this would be ideal. Just give them, give them a little bit less ammo for the secondaries, but give them anti-air and give them. Uh, give them better director and you can be dual purpose. Yeah, okay, so this would be this would be cool. So that is a really cheap so we can do it uh, alongside rebuilding the Achens. That's actually a uh, rebuild um, alongside building the Achilles. So that's gonna take care of the light. Cruisers, so yeah, and I really don't know when we're gonna go to war against Russia because <laughs> they've been really not doing much. I might just have to up the pace, though I don't really know how. Oh, I'll have to see. I'll have to see. So, thank you very much for joining me. See you in the next episode.